Good morning, everyone. So every week when I am prepping for uh, Sunday Mass and for preaching, there's a, a priest should have an obedience to Scripture. And so I decided, I was like, well, let's go back to our first reading. And so our first reading today came from Job chapter 7. And at the end of that reading, the very last line says this, it says, Lord, remember that my life is a breath, and my eye will never again see good. And I was like, there it is. Life is terrible. <laughs> I was like, melancholics of the world unite. <laughs> No, I, I actually decided today, I want to talk to you about our second reading. Today we're going to talk about something kind of controversial. And it's something, you know, there are things in our faith, brothers and sisters, that make us uncomfortable. And there are topics, not just in faith, but in life, that a lot of us are nervous to talk about. And as mature Christians, my hope for every one of you it's not just that you believe. It's that you're mature. It's that you're a Christian who doesn't bury your head in the sand over tough issues. But that you're a Christian who has asked the hard questions. Maybe it's not that you know the answer to everything. But you've engaged. Your heart's been involved. Your mind's been involved. And you've looked at things and you've said, You know, I don't know everything, God. But I am convinced that the truth is in Christ. And I am convinced of that. And so today, you know, there, there's, a, there's just this tough topic. And the topic today is that ugly word, slavery. And it's an ugly word. In fact, it's so ugly, the, the word for a slave in Greek is doulos. And St. Paul talks about slavery a lot in the New Testament. And we don't like that word. In fact, so much so that a lot of Bible translations out there, that when Paul begins, not all of his letters, but a number of his letters, he begins them and he says, Paulos doulos Christu. Paul, a slave of Christ. In a lot of translations, they dislike that word so much, they, and especially in America with our history of slavery. Americans don't like that word, and so they translate the word slave as servant. But that's not what Paul says. Paul calls himself a slave of Christ Jesus. So it really is an on call comedy today. Yes. No. But we want to engage this. We want to talk about that. How can Paul go into that? Now, here's what happens as a pastor. I, I, this is where I feel like a spiritual father. I worry about you all. I worry about what's on the radio, and I worry about what's on television. I worry about what you're listening to and who's influencing you when you're not in the church. And that kind of anxiety I have for you all has driven me to, of all places, YouTube. Right? It's driven me there. I was thinking this morning, I was like, it's kind of like the kid, the dad who's like, no, 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 I'm playing video games for the kids, just to make sure it's a safe video game, right? <laughs> but I really, it really has, because I, I don't own a television, and, but I worry about what's out there. So anyway, so recently I was watching YouTube and, and I love listening to voices that are opposed to our faith. Because we should listen to them and we should say, what are they saying? Do they have a good argument? Is there something intelligent there? Can we respond to it? And one of the people who's a fallen away Catholic, and we all know fallen away Catholics, they're just the worst, aren't they? Not, sorry, <laughs> Lord, I repent. I love them. <laughs> Fallen away Catholics are the ones that have the most baggage with the church, right? They have a hard time with the church. And so 
So one of those out there, one of these fallen away cats, is a guy named Bill Maher. Bill Maher has a late night TV show, and he has a lot of baggage against Catholicism and Christianity. And so it's on YouTube, and Bill Maher, in 2014, he had um, a guy named, I think it's Ralph Reed, on his show. And Ralph Reed is a, a well-educated Christian, and uh, he was the head of the Christian Coalition. And so Bill Maher had him on his show, and I was watching this on YouTube, and uh, you just know that Bill Maher is going to eat this guy for lunch. And he did. And so he asks him, Ralph Reed comes on, and Bill Maher says, you know, a recent poll shows that 28% of Americans believe that the Bible is true and to be taken literally. And he asked him, he said, are you one of those people? And he said, yes, I am. And I just thought, oh no, here we go. Let's see if this guy can answer well. And so Bill Maher, he said, well, okay, good. I made a list. And he pulls a list out of his pocket, and he has a bunch of embarrassing, kind of difficult passages in the Bible. And you could just feel the guy squirming in his chair. And my heart went out to him because it's very hard to answer things on the spot. It's very difficult. But the very first one, he said, look, the Bible is okay with slavery. He said, the Bible just seems to be just fine with slavery. And, and Ralph just kind of, he was squirming and he, and he said, well... You know, he kind of said, well, there's a bad kind of slavery, and, and maybe that's, you know, and, and Bill Maher just laughed, and he said, oh, right, as opposed to the good kind of slavery. And I just, my heart just broke. And here's the passage that Bill Maher is going after. It's from Ephesians chapter 6. In Ephesians 6, St. Paul says this, Slaves, be obedient to those who are your earthly masters, with fear and trembling and singleness of heart as to Christ. How do we answer that? You can just feel, right? When you hear that, there's one of the greatest heroes of our faith, St. Paul, and he seems to be advocating slavery. Are you an awake Christian, brothers and sisters? Do you engage these questions? Why does Paul say that? If this really is the word of God, how do we understand that? And what I want to do today is I want to give you a confidence, not that you have to know everything, but that this really is the word of God. It doesn't mean everything's literal. That's another homily. But it's powerful and it is meant to speak to us. And it's something that you should grow in your knowledge about. So how do we understand this? How can we wrestle with the fact that St. Paul seems to be telling slaves to simply be obedient? There's another letter in the New Testament there's a letter of Philemon. Some people say Philemon, but I judge them in my heart because they're wrong. No, just kidding. <laughs> but Philemon is a letter Paul wrote to Philemon, and it's about a runaway slave named Onesimus. And Paul sends Onesimus back to his master. And the atheists look at us and they say, you silly Christians. How could you possibly believe in this? So here we go. Brothers and sisters, you got to know your faith. You have to be ready to answer people who come at you and say, how could you believe in a God like that? How could you believe in a God who makes people slaves? So we're done. Go home, next king. Here's how we do it, brothers and sisters. Paul, the story of Christianity... The story of Christianity is a story about slaves being set free. That is the story of St. Paul. That is the story of Jesus Christ. That is your story and that is my story. 
My RCIA, you guys know this, every week in RCIA these days, I'm telling them how to be a Christian means you have to go through the Exodus story. And every week we do the same thing. We start class off, and I say, you know, in the Old Testament, there's a slavery. God's people are in Egypt, they're in slavery. And in the New Testament, you guys are Old Testament people, you guys are in the New Covenant, you're saved by Christ, good luck. Um, (laughs) But in the New Testament... Right? In the New Testament, there's another slavery. And I say, what is it? And they say, sin. And they're right. Sin is the new slavery. And I say, you know, in the Old Testament, there's a taskmaster, this evil overlord. And that guy's name is Pharaoh. And I ask these people, and I say, in the New Testament, you know, who's the overlord? And they all say, oh, it's Satan. And they're right. And then I say, in the Old Testament, there's a redeemer, and his name is Moses. And he redeems God's people from slavery. And in the New Testament, I say, there's this redeemer, and this person redeems God's people, and they all say, Mary. And I say, you can't be Catholic. No, they don't say that. It's Jesus, right? It's, there's all these parallels back and forth. And if you're going to understand what it means to be a Christian, St. Paul always has the exodus in the back of his mind. He always has that in the back of his mind. The story of Christianity, and we're, we're going to get back to that question we started with, but the starting place, brothers and sisters, the story of our faith is the story of slaves set free. The story of our faith is the story of slaves set free. Here's what Jesus says about this in John chapter 8. In John 8, Jesus says this. He says, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not continue in the house forever. The son continues forever. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Sin makes us slaves. Now, yesterday we had a uh, morning of recollection and reflection for leaders in different ministries here at the church. And I just want to share with you something I shared with them yesterday from one of the greatest saints in history, a man named St. Francis de Sales. St. Francis de Sales gets this. He understands that to be a Christian means to go through the exodus. It means to leave behind your slaveries. And for us, that means our sin. And so St. Francis de Sales says the first thing you've got to do if you're going to be a Christian is you've got to get rid of mortal sin. What is mortal sin? Mortal sin is something serious that you know is wrong You're free to not do it, and you do it anyways. You know, God, I know, right, that I'm not supposed to X, Y, or Z. I know I'm not supposed to commit adultery. I know I'm not supposed to steal. I know I'm not supposed to take advantage of people. But I'm going to do it anyway. St. Francis Sales says the first thing you've got to do is you've got to stop that. You've got to realize that your mortal sin is an offense against God who loved you more than anything. And you, you might say, Lord, I'm weak. I'm not perfect yet. But I'm going to stop intentionally doing things that are strong and grave sins against you. That's the first thing. I first started doing that in college. I had a lot of sin in my life. It was really hard to overcome, but I I made the, the very intentional decision to say, Jesus, I don't know everything, but I'm convicted. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to live as you ask me to. But here's the second problem St. Francis de Sales says. As he says, sometimes what happens to us is we, we try to avoid sin, 
but we still wish we could. Anybody ever feel like that? Yeah, nobody. Okay. Good. Yeah, we all feel like that way, don't we? I mean, when I was in college, I said, I said you know what? I know that if I go to some of these parties, I'm going to get in trouble. And I said, Jesus, I want to follow you, but I'm going to avoid that. But I really wanted to go. And I was jealous of people who got to. Now today, when you left your house to come to Mass, right, were you jealous of the person who doesn't go to church? You weren't, but some people were. <laughs> that guy in the eighth row, I'm just kidding. We have that, don't we? We think people who don't have to follow God have it better. And brothers and sisters, that is a lie. That's a lie. Your life is better in Christ. It's tough at first. You've got to follow him away from things you used to love. But brothers and sisters, if you still love sin, you have to get rid of that. You have to increase your love for Jesus. If you're just following Jesus, you're saying, Lord, well, I want to follow you and I don't want to go to H-E double hockey sticks. And so, you know, I guess I'll go. I guess I'll go to Mass. I'll go to Levin so I don't miss the Super Bowl. Right? (laughs) I know know that's what happened. (laughs) And that's fine. You're fulfilling the law. But you want to love Jesus. If that's all you're doing, you'll never make it. You'll never grow in holiness. You don't want to just follow God. You want to be in love with God and let that love carry you so your obedience is a joy. That's our life, brothers and sisters. Now, we still have those days when the Jews left Egypt and they're they're following God. In Exodus 17, they start to miss Egypt. And the reason is because all they're eating is that manna from heaven. And they say, we wish we had the food we had back in Egypt. And they talk about the flesh pots of Egypt. They say, yeah, we were slaves, but at least we got to eat meat. And I, I have days like that. I call them my flesh pot of Egypt days. I really do. <laughs> this is what happens when you become a totally lame priest. But <laughs> I do. I think that my flesh pot of Egypt days. They're the days where I'm like, Lord, I know this is better. I know it up here, and I know the priest is where I belong. But man, do I want to move to tell you right and just be selfish? You know, that's my flesh pot of Egypt days, right? And so I'm there. We've got to suppress that. We have got to draw our hearts to Christ. The story of the Christian is a story of a slave who has been set free. Okay, that's the first point. The second point is this. We still didn't answer the first question. If Christianity and Judaism is all about slaves being set free, how can St. Paul say what he said today? And here is our second reading. St. Paul says this. He says, For though I am free from all men, right? Paul's free. Paul is a Roman citizen. That comes with a whole lot of rights in the ancient world. Though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all that I might win the more. If Christianity is a story of slaves being set free, how can St. Paul choose to become a slave? And brothers and sisters, this is where it's so powerful today. This reading is for you. It is the word of God, and it's spoken to you. And here's the truth. The first movement of Christianity is a movement out of Egypt. It's a movement where we stop being slaves to our desires, to our lusts, our envy, our greed, and our selfishness. Where because of the love of Christ and his death and resurrection, that we can be set free from slavery to our sin. So how can we go back to it? Here's what Paul's getting at. Jesus never had slavery to sin. Never. He was perfectly free, always. 
The slavery to our passions and to our sin is evil. But there's a second kind of slavery that St. Paul talks about in the New Testament, and this is what he's talking about here. And it's the slavery of authentic love. In Philippians chapter 2, St. Paul says this. He says, have this mind among yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus, right? Think this way. Who though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped or exploited, but he emptied himself and took on the form of a slave. You see, Jesus Christ was free, and he became a slave so that you might be set free. Christ became a slave. Jesus is crucified. In the Roman world, you only crucify slaves and revolutionaries. In Matthew 26, Judas takes 30 pieces of silver to betray Jesus, which is the price of a slave. Jesus became a slave because he loved. And so Paul, brothers and sisters, what today is about, the first movement of the Christian life is away from an evil slavery. But once that's happened in your life, once you become free of sin, and the deeper that happens, the more that you and I are supposed to look like him. Jesus didn't have to empty himself. He didn't have to go to the bottom place. But he did, because he loved. And that's the movement Paul's talking about today. If you love, if your love becomes stronger and stronger to the point where it becomes Christ-like, you will take on suffering for the love of others. And that's what happened to Paul. He loved others so much that he wanted others to be saved. And so he said, I myself will become a slave, Lord, if it can help this person to find freedom and redemption. The story of Christianity is a story of slaves set free. And once you've been set free, brothers and sisters, Jesus invites you to be a part of the redemption that happens in him. So Jesus, this morning, Lord, we ask you for that. Lord, first and foremost, Jesus, I just thank you that you were free and you became a slave for me. To redeem a slave, the Father gave his son. Thank you. Jesus, I pray that you would help us not only to stop sinning, but Jesus, purge my heart of that desire for sin. Lord, I don't even want to desire any of those things of the world anymore. Purify my desires. And Jesus, someday, Lord, someday if I can grow in love, if I can have love like you have, Lord, may I give myself over as you did that others can have them.